yeah, so 2019, Pikes Peak International Hill Climb, six months of work, six months of testing, time off, angry wife, crying baby, all that stuff. So yeah, it's, it's, all, it's all coming together now. This is our fourth day of practice. You know, I feel all right. Um, you know, it's it's 5.30 in the morning. <laughs> so, and, you know, I don't know if anyone feels real good at 5.30 in the morning. The typical day at Pikes Peak is pretty extreme. Uh, we're only allowed the mountain first thing in the morning before it's open to the public. So that means getting up before three o'clock, getting on the road around three o'clock, setting up your pits and everything around four. And then we actually are rolling around five or 5.15, depending on what the sun gives us. And so you're first out, you're freezing, you can hardly see. You're on this extreme mountain. You're thinking, what am I doing here? Chassis wise, the bike's been brilliant. Everything that Jeremy Toy does with that bike just gets better and better and better. But I wasn't real pleased with the speed in qualifying. We had a few issues with my riding, uh, with the bike setup, and once you don't have a good feeling, you can get in your own head a little bit, and then that can throw you off in different areas. I'm still not getting the brake entries right. Um, I got braking later and later and later but I'm still turning into it. And I don't know if it's the safety mechanism in my head yeah. kicking in, but like, I've got to be so close because I feel like at some corners I'm going to hit the wall. So on Wednesday night, Nicola flew over from Italy, straight from the Aprilia factory. But with him is different mapping. Once that map came in, it's just like, it just unlocked the bike. I felt great. The team this year has been amazing. Absolutely incredible. Like I've never had, I've had guys helping me. I've had a lot of manufacturer support and that kind of stuff, but I've never had a racing team for me before. It's usually been me and one guy or whatever. I've never had a data guy, a tie guy, a chassis guy. And also to have the support of Aprilia in Italy as well. I mean, they flew over one of their techs for this race. I mean, I just can't believe that. I was amazed when they said, yeah, he's coming. I'm incredibly privileged to be in this position and, and get to do this kind of stuff because it's the kind of stuff most riders dream of. It certainly was when I was a kid. Yeah, honestly speaking, it's, it's uh, amazing to me that we started really the first week of February at Fontana with a completely stock bike and with just a handful of changes we've been able to make the bike race ready. The biggest challenge of this whole project has been the learning curve. Me specifically not having any Aprilia background. Trimming weight was a little bit more difficult than I expected because the thing's decent to start with. Really what we did was just purge all of the street running gear. That made our base chassis and then some upgrades with the suspension and a little more intense brakes that we were needed and some modifications that uh, Rennie had asked for, like uh, a thumb brake. Easily, the thing that makes the biggest difference in any races on the street, Pikes Peak, any of your road races, is the calm of the rider and being able to focus positively. The consequences are extremely high and that's always in the back of your mind because obviously as a human, you're thinking, I don't want to get hurt. But as a racer, you're like, I'm gonna win. So these two are in this constant battle with each other and you know, it, it, it over, 
it overstimulates the focus in, in, in most of us, and that's how the fast guys go fast. I certainly screwed it big time in 2016, and I just panicked, and I didn't need to panic. I was riding fine, I was in front by a decent margin, and I got in my own head and, and I made a really dumb mistake, which could have been the last mistake I ever made. I mean, I hit the jackpot in terms of crashing at Pikes Peak. So I'm just trying to remain calm, and I mean, I know the track well, I've done plenty of study. Main thing is just, relaxing. It's been an amazing project. I've been so happy to be a part of it. I just keep getting messages of support from people I've never met. Brilliant riders all around the world are really pumped on this whole thing, which has been great. Uh, and I'm hugely appreciative of it. So I just want to get out there and just get the business done. Race day morning at Pikes Peak. Didn't get a great night of sleep last night, but I've never, I've never got a decent night's sleep the night before uh, Pikes. The bike's brilliant. The bike is really, really good. With all the changes that we've made throughout the week, they've been the right changes, they've been in the correct direction, uh, and. It's an animal, don't get me wrong, but you know, I feel that motorcycles are a little bit like people. You treat them right and they'll treat you right. So this thing's certainly been treated very well and uh, hopefully it, uh, it does the same for us this year. I don't want to say what result I want because I don't want to jinx myself. I know what I want. I know what the bike's capable of. Um, I think it's fairly obvious what I'm going for. I just got to ride as fast as I can and whatever happens happens you know the rest is up to the racing gods really you know it's like it's facing up to the demon and it's a beautiful thing but it's a terrifying thing so time to get this show started
yeah, it has been. It's been a hell of a day. Um, the, I mean, to win the king, king of the mountain thing, I gotta say it's pretty hollow. Like, at the moment, it's it feels very hollow. Um, the fastest rider didn't win king of the mountain this year. Um, you know, you know, Carlin. We we were the last two left, as we were last year. We were the last two left, and he beat me last year. As I was literally about to pull the visor down, Carlin came up to me and shook my hand, and he just said, "Good luck, man. See you at the top." And I was like, "Absolutely, man. See you at the top. Have a good run." And you know, ten minutes later, he was gone. And yeah, unfortunately, America's lost a really good racer and a great human being. That's that's the the short of it. I think in the long term, I'm going to look back on this as a job well done. My objective was to win the heavyweight crown, and if we were lucky, and I mean really, really lucky, we might be able to have a good shake at the heavyweight record. We got both of those. So as far as I was concerned, that was a success. You know, Carlin's death, obviously, Carl casts a big shadow over all that. But it doesn't change the fact that we worked really, really well as a team over a long time. And, you know, Shane Pacillo, who coordinated this entire event from a couple of beers in Costa Mesa to a full-on race team and that went out and won Pikes Peak. I'll look back on that in 10 years, 50 years, when I'm a dishevelled old man screaming at the weather. <laughs> it's like, you know, I'll look at that and think, shit, yeah, we did all right that day. <laughs>